Ford spends more money per car on health insurance than they do steal. Whoa. Employers collectively spend $1.3 trillion a year funding health care for their employees. And no one is satisfied. There is not a moment of health care that people are like, we love it, don't change it. Yeah. It's working. The value <laughs> proposition is great. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by Jay Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley in partnership with Leumi Tech, sponsored by Hippo Insurance, Opwest Labs, Turing, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Handling employee benefits is difficult, really, really difficult speaking from experience. Today, I'm being joined with Amanda Lannert, CEO of JellyVision, maker of benefits engagement platform, Alex. More than 1,500 companies, including 114 of the Fortune 500 and two-fifths of the country's 25 largest companies, use Alex to help their employees understand complex topics from choosing a healthcare insurance plan to saving for retirement or navigating a leave of absence. Welcome, Amanda. Amanda Lannert, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders, CEO of Jelly Vision, all the way from Chicago. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for having me. If I were to begin to articulate your uh, or describe your journey with all the massive awards you've gotten, whether it's CEO of the year, Woman of the Year, from from the different organizations, we're not going to end this podcast ever. But uh, today we're going to be focusing on your journey as well as your leadership and Jelly Vision, employee decision making, and I'm really excited to dive deep into this world of employee decision making because I have no idea what it's like, except for my own personal experiences that I know that it's freaking difficult to make decisions as an employee. It's complicated. It's cumbersome. But before we get to that, Amanda, tell me a little bit about who you are. How how do you sort of live your life or how do you see your career trajectory? Yeah, I, I'm the kid of academics. My, my dad was a doctor, knew exactly what he wanted to be from the time he was 15 years old, studied for 15 years to get there and did nothing but that one job. My mom was a nurse turned stay at home mom. Uh, and so I grew up in a household where it was important to study and to learn how to learn. Uh, <laughs> but it wasn't entrepreneurial and it didn't have anything to do with business. So I studied Augustan to romantic literature in school with wait, a, wait, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. a concentration what? in biology. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was an English nerd, um, and my plan was to get a JD, um, MD and write public policy for hospitals about what, you know, sort of like when you're at the, the intersection of ethics and science, what do you do? Um, but when I spent my junior year abroad at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland and studied mostly beer and boys and got behind in my pre-med credits, uh, and my dad told me he wasn't going to pay for a fifth year of undergrad. I knew I was off the dole. I had no skills, no experience, and no network whatsoever, and had to go get a job. Um, so I ended up in, in advertising, and 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 my sort of first job out of college, graduated on a Friday, showed up uh, at a job on Monday. And I've been incredibly lucky ever since with sort of this like being at the right place, right time and always working hard. And I've sort of become an accidental entrepreneur, deeply involved in tech. Uh, no one, you know, let alone me ever saw it coming that I'd be a CEO of a tech company, but I'm certainly, uh, certainly enjoying the ride. And you're like, who am I? Uh, a, a, a person with a lot of curiosity, a lot of energy, um, always evolving, always learning, uh, and excited about just about anything. If I look at it long enough, I will find a reason to find it deeply fascinating. Yeah. Um, and I also have a great sense of humor, uh, like to laugh, like to make sure that everything is fun if it can be. Uh, and that's how I've gone through life. I, I love it. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm getting so much inspiration to this show, you know, it seems that, you know, the, the unifying factor for, for leaders is the fact that they, they can become passionate if they think long enough about a problem. And, and it's not that they're necessarily attached to one specific thing, but they, but they get excited about problem solving and about the, the infinite complexity that a problem can have and all the different layers. And so over the past nine years, you're focusing on Jelly Vision. Tell me a little bit about what that is and, and, and your entrance to this role. 
Yeah, the entrance to the role has been a long and windy road. Um, Jelly Vision in its first version was a film company and then an educational software company and then a gaming company. They got really famous in the 90s wow. for making games like You Don't Know Jack and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where we created virtual game show hosts wow. on these things called CD-ROMs. <laughs> that would go into your computer and hold data. I saw it in a museum when the once. internet uh, came to be. And the, they, they exactly, you use them as a coaster. Uh, when when the internet happened and CD ROMs died, so too did our aspirations to be in gaming. And we switched from creating virtual game show hosts in a B two C gaming space to creating virtual advisors in a B2B enterprise space. The company's thesis was we're, we're going to go to where there's furrowed brow, where people are trying to do something complicated and boring, but important, and we'll talk them through it. And it turns out after seven years or so, eight years of operating as a digital agency and always wanting to productize and scale what we do, we landed in healthcare. And to try to set the stage about healthcare in America, Ford spends more money per car on health insurance than they do steal. Whoa. Employers collectively spend $1.3 trillion a year funding healthcare for their employees. And no one is satisfied. There is not a moment of healthcare that people are like, we love it, don't change it, yeah. it's working, the value <laughs> proposition is great. So what we do is we materially reduce the cost of benefits confusion for the employers and employees. And let's be clear, healthcare is too expensive and billions and billions, hundreds of billions of dollars, in fact, are wasted every year. Sometimes they're, it's wasted because of systemic inefficiencies too many people in the ecosystem. And other times it's wasted because sometimes humans make bad decisions. We really sit at the forefront of decisions that where human capacity around decision-making could be better, could be improved. And we sell things like math, but we use our gaming days and our ability to engage and entertain to get people to be less stressed. Uh. We make thinking about mortality and sickness and needs of protection, we can make it palatable and make people feel really confident around the decisions that come uh, come down to having access to and financing healthcare, health insurance, voluntary benefits, the things that are really important to your family. Amanda, take me take me clear, two, two steps back for a second, benefits. because yeah. you're, you're, we're, we're talking about yeah. the complexity and the confusion. I experienced this firsthand to, to a lot of people here that may not have experienced this yet. Why is it such a confusing a, a, you know, a problem to tackle. And it, it's one that I guess every person needs to tackle at some point. Why is it so confusing? Well, it's, it's confusing because of the way we have, we have a middle payer model, right? We have companies that provide care. We have companies that insure or, or provide payment for care. And then we have companies who sponsor care, your employer. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth leg is we have people who use care. And this ecosystem does not agree. They don't have aligned incentives about how to make money, what quality means, and what appropriate behaviors are. Carriers fundamentally make money by more care and more expensive care. Employers are incented to have the right care, the quality care, and employees sometimes confuse quality care with good bedside manner. My doctor sees me quickly when I want to see him. Never mind the fact that the fact that you've had seven visits over one condition is a problem. It should have been one and done. So very, very different constituents with different versions of success, different needs, and so on. Uh, but like just to kind of like lay out what's going on in the country, you know, seven years ago or so, to be provocative, you'd say every company is a tech company because of automation and machine learning and computing power. And you know, it's kind of like, yeah, every company is a tech company. Now you can easily say every company is a healthcare company. <laughs> and I'm not talking because of COVID, of vaccinations and sanitation stations and protocols. The world of benefits and sort of health insurance has changed so much over the last 10 years, all because employers are trying to better manage the cost of healthcare. Right. So it used to be, here's some medical insurance, here's some dental insurance, here's some voluntary benefits, and here's your paid leave. And now employers are in the business of offering chronic care condition solutions, care navigation solutions, pharmaceutical savings products and services, all designed to help employees get the care they need more effectively and for a lower cost, because it's just on this unsustainable trajectory for everyone. Um, consumerism has largely been a, hey, we can't pay any more as an employer, so you need to pay employee. But we right. really haven't cracked the nut on driving better health, health like decisions 
And that's what Jelly Vision is really focusing on is enabling better decisions that save everybody in the ecosystem money while getting people the care that they need. So what have you learned about this decision making that, you know, the Jelly the Jelly Vision is really tackling? What what part of the decision making process are you? I, I heard before that you're, you know, the gamification part of it or the, you know, the, the way that you're approaching some some topics that otherwise may not be very approachable. How, how does Jelly Vision actually go into this incredibly sounds like complicated process? And, and makes it different? So the first thing is, the first thing is, despite being in the world of benefits education, we know the vast majority of people do not want a PhD in healthcare. They want to make a good decision and then not think about it again until they absolutely need to. So just to be clear, it's a very high threshold for like information to really be able to make good decisions and a very low appetite for investing and getting, you know, mastery of said information. So we use that to try to create the optics of ease. We really, really try to reduce, you know, fatigue and too much information, make it as simple as possible. And importantly, we make it as contextualized as possible. You don't have to learn about everything about benefits. You just need to learn about what matters to you. And then we use plain English, (laughs) stress reducing mechanics, you know, persuasion architecture all around trying to sell math because our algorithm is truly about what is in the lowest annual uh, annualized out of pocket uh, investments for employees. We really do have their interests in mind and, and that leads to trust and trust leads to better decision making, more engagement, et cetera. Now, as the leader of this company, when you're going about trying to make it, you know, a, a smoother process, you know, there, there's one aspect of it, which I'm hearing is more of the algorithmic side and more of, you know, understanding what is, what is, you know, rec- the recommended approach. But then there's also the messaging behind it, that it sounds to me like that's a pretty crucial aspect. Correct me if I'm wrong. How do you actually go about, you know, figuring out what is the right messaging? What is the right approach? How do you make people, you know, feel better with what they're doing? How do you even, it's, cause it's not an exact science. You're, you're exactly right. There are a lot of components to our solution that range from really complex algorithms, you know, machine learning, processing millions of claims, you know, on a national basis. But the reality is we have developed a software presentation layer that is as humanistic as possible, whether it is literally a voice from behind the screen talking to you. Even in our writing, we write the way people talk. We make incredibly simple word choices. We use metaphor and analogies to paint pictures in people's heads. So it is sort of communication on top and incredibly, you know, complex Boolean logic based decision trees for managing all the variables. It's, it's, you know, massive amounts of claims data. It's very complex parsing systems. So we can optimize for 2000 different benefit eligibility classes and, and tons of different plans under the hood. But it really is like typically imagine you're like, I don't know what to do. What do I do? I pick somebody, a, a call somebody, tell me what to do. Yeah. We try to simulate that call of like, what would, <laughs> would that person ask you? And how can we make it as simple and humanistic and a, as much about you? instead of about benefits as possible. So you quickly get to what's the right answer. You quickly make good mathematical decisions and then you get on with your life, which is really what everybody wants to do as quickly as possible. Wow. And nobody wakes up and says, today is a Tuesday. I'm going to go shopping for benefits. Exactly. It's like, you have to do it. It's important to do it. But uh, no one is excited about our vertical ever. I think that I procrastinated for for quite some time with with my decisions, and I and I'm sure that I'm not the only one. It's 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 scary. It's a scary decision. You 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 feel that you're underprepared no matter what, and so you avoid the decision, and it makes perfect sense. And I and I understand you know how how big of a problem it is at least from my perspective. And so I I think it's fantastic what you're doing. Give me a few a little bit of you know context. Jelly Vision today. What what's actually happening? How many companies is it is it helping operate? A little bit about the ecosystem. Yeah, we have more than 300 employees, more than 1,600 uh, uh, employer customers who employ 18 million employees. And uh, last year, we did about $110 billion worth of insurance premiums wow. through our platform. So definitely size and scale, the market leader in the space. We are, um, and I say this humbly because we worked a really <laughs> long time and really, you know, listened to our customers to get there, but we're definitely the market leader in the space by far. So, and over the past nine years, you, you're watching it grow. What is it like now, looking back nine years? And is this what you expected? Were there any you know, huge surprises along the way? Was it just a clear-cut journey of knowing what to do? I, 
you know what? The, the road up is never this, right? That's That to me is a myth. It's this, right? So it feels like you're always just hanging on by your fingertips. Like if we're getting really real about it, like it's just not a linear progression. Um, but I, I like I remember moments. It's all kinds of moments. First of all, there is no ultimate milestone, whether it's a fundraise or hitting 10 million in ARR or 50 million in ARR. Like there is no milestone. There are only more peaks. So you got to pace yourself. That's sort of my advice. It's like there's no finish line in business. And I remember when I finally realized we were the market leader, I finally realized we were, we were, people knew about us before we introduced ourselves. Like there's that weird moment where you're like, you're heard of and, and you're not used to it. You're used to saying, hi, I'm Amanda from Jelly Vision. We make Alex and Alex is this thing. And it's like, you're like, yeah, we know Jelly Vision. Once that happens and like you're known ahead of introducing yourself, you have a split second of being like, oh my gosh. All this work were there before you realized there are now 50 competitors directly targeting you and your book of business. And I remember saying, like, couldn't you give me a week? <laughs> couldn't you give me a week to just be like, wow? But no, then you start going, all right, you have to play offense and a little bit of defense, but only 5% defense, 90%, 95% offense, or you'll lose your edge, right? And it's, it's, there's really very little moment for deep reflection and enjoyment of the wins. Like we get really critical uh, and analytical about our losses and then the wins sort of happen and then you set the bar instantly rises and you're on to the next one. There's not a lot of like gloating, I, I don't think in business, to be fair. I mean, we might have a beer and, 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 and spend time appreciating coworkers, but there's no like awesome sauce. You just, it's more and next and, and, and better. Right. Small celebrations and then quickly go on to the next problem because the, there are infinite. Uh, now it, it, I can see the excitement coming from here. If you look over your, you know, your journey or at, at least specifically in Jelly Vision, what, what do you enjoy most? If you had to, to drill it down to, to one aspect of, of the Jelly Vision journey, whether it's the leadership, it's the customer happiness, it's the, you know, the B2B2C, whatever it may be, what do you, what do you, what does it come down to for you? Yeah. What makes me tick? So I think there are different kinds of CEOs. You know, there are, there are financial CEOs who are masters at fundraising and they're always raising, capitalizing the business. There are um, CEOs who are, are product visionaries, right? There are all kinds of different C CEOs. Uh, to me, I'm, I'm a, a people CEO. My job description is take care of the people. So they take care of everything else. <laughs> and make sure we don't run out of money. So, you know, financing the business. But uh, what what I am drawn to, what blows me away is are my coworkers. They're not just like talented and hardworking and humble, but they're usually hilarious and like deeply interesting, maybe slightly weird, but in a really fantastic way, uh, people. So getting to know my coworkers and seeing sort of their brilliance is absolutely the glue for me. It's probably the glue for most people at Jelly Vision. And the second thing is I like working on a problem that matters. Like taking a dent out of this problem, it matters if we do our job well. We can, we can save a family material money. You know, like I, I like that part of winning, winning by doing that feels good to me. Right. And it's not just about the, you know, the, until now we've spoken primarily about the experience of making the decision, but it's actually much more than that. It's actually this idea that, you know, by making the experience better, you're actually enabling better decision making. And, you know, if you need to use the insurance or the benefits, that's when it really counts. And if you got, if you didn't get the right one, you, then, then that really hurts. But if you got the right one, then it makes your life a whole lot easier. Amanda, thank you so much for coming. Uh, 20 minutes is way too short. I have so many more questions for you, but I have three short ones that I have to ask. And the first one is, what is your favorite subject from middle school or high school? For sure, despite being an English major, it's history. Okay. Um, I know history is supposed to, be, supposed to be about countries and governments, but to me, it's about you know people and stories. Uh, and I really like studying the past to get lessons for the future. So I'm going to just say history. Wonderful. And one of your role models, somebody that inspires you. I have way too many mentors <laughs> to be able to answer this question easily. There are so many people who are so generous and will, you know, tell me the truth, but still have my back. Um, so I'm going to go for someone I have never met, which is Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg. Okay. And the reason I'm going with RBG is she's incredibly self-made. She's absolutely a fighter. She is a warrior, powerful, but it's never about ego. It's about others. And I really, really respect how hard she worked to get powerful. And then she used all of her power for other people. To me, that's like the ultimate queen move. It's just such an impressive legacy she left behind. 
I love it. And what are three words that you would choose to describe yourself? The hardest question. So I knew this question was coming and, and it is the worst question where I was like, man, I could answer anything about business or the whatever. So I actually asked a few of my colleagues, like, okay. what three words best describe me? Because I want to punt this one. And they all three said passionate, which is I know one of the sort of purpose things is like discovering the passion and curiosity. They're everything. So I didn't want to use passion. So I'm going to go with um, learning. Okay. Direct. Yes. And insightful. Yes. But probably the three words that really best describe me are mom, wife, and advisor. <laughs> I love it. And and the passion, you know, throughout the last 20 minutes, it, it just exudes this, the screen completely. And I, and I love it. Amanda, thank you very, very much. Uh, stay safe. Uh, stay healthy. Thank you for taking the time to join me. And thank you for, for making the, a lot of people's lives much better. Uh, it's, it's really, it's, it's really a, a, an honor to talk to you here. Thank you for this opportunity, for this format, and for the stories Thank you're you. telling. I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know your content. I think Thank it's you. incredibly cool. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Amanda. Bye-bye.